Hi everyone, it's Amanda Rideout, health coach, and today we're continuing our anti-aging skincare interview with my very good friend, pharmacist Ben Fuchs. Hi Ben, how are you doing? Doing good. We're going to talk toners today. I'll, I'll take over for you. Absolutely. Wonderful. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's talk toners. Uh, the thing, toners are kind of interesting to me as a, as a guy, as somebody who formulates skincare products but doesn't necessarily use all the products they formulate. I'm always intrigued by what people think of toner. Okay, well, there's a lot of confusion around it, but really, it shouldn't be confusing because the word toner is a very specific word, as we've talked about. What does the word tone mean? To tighten. No, it has nothing to do with rebalancing pH, despite what you read in the esthetician textbooks or changing the characteristics or quality of the skin after you wash it or after you use soap. And these are all kind of uh, 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 things that people believe, mythologies that are around, uh, surround the use of toners, but they're not literally what a toner is supposed to do. Literally, a toner is supposed to tighten. So then we got to ask ourselves, if we're going to create a toner, if we want to use a toner, is how can we tighten the skin? Well, what do you think of, as a consumer, what do you think of when you think of tightened skin? Tight appearance? Smooth appearance? What, tell me how you see as a woman. As a woman, I would think that I'm, I'm erasing some of the wrinkles that you could see on my skin. Got it. Got it. So it, you're, you're improving the, the formation of wrinkles. That's yeah. what it, you, okay. Well, that's kind of the implication of what a toner would do. When you think of tight skin, you think of wrinkle-free skin, you think of smooth skin. So then we got to say, how can we really change wrinkle formation by using a toner? Well, in order to address that question, we got to ask, we got, we got to uh, really understand what the skin is. And this is a huge, huge, hugely important topic because how the heck can we make intelligent buying decisions on a skincare product if we don't know what the skin is? Exactly. Right? Yeah. What happens is we become victims of predators. And I mean that literally. The skincare business is filled with predation and exploitation. And the reason we're so easy to predate and exploit is because we don't understand the skin. We don't really know what the skin is. So we talked about this a little bit on our last video. I'll say it again because it has a, if we're going to make a good decision on toner, we really have to, have, to understand, have to understand how to apply the physiology of the skin to our product. So you've got, uh, as we said before, and I, I know I'm repeating myself, but it's, it's just important to really get this hit home with this. You got beef, you got candy coating, and you got sprinkles. Right? That's our right. tripart model, our triple part model, or three part model of the skin. You got the beef, you got the candy coating, and you got the sprinkles. Okay? The sprinkles are made up of dead cells. The sprinkles are made up of dead cells that are about roughly one tenth as thick as a piece of paper. That's pretty thin, right? Very thin. Okay, very thin. Okay? The candy coating is about as thick as one piece of paper. Okay, and that's called your epidermis. And between, between the stratum corneum, the sprinkles, and the epidermis, you have the upper part of the skin, which is only 10% of the skin, of the organ we call the skin, right? Mm -hmm. Only 10% is this candy coating and sprinkles, sprinkles and candy coating. Stratum corneum is what it's called, dead cells, and the, uh, and the epidermis. Now, this is a very important 10%, and it's only as thin as a piece of paper, but it's extremely functional. You know, the sprinkles keep everything intact. And the epidermis serves a very important protective function. It candy coats the entire body. But we're only talking about something that's about as thin as a piece of paper. Now, within that epidermis, there's a lot of activity. And this is where most skincare products pretend to be able to work. They don't necessarily work there, and I'll tell you why they don't in a moment. But this is where skincare products would like to, be, would like to work. For the most part, however, skincare products work at the sprinkle level, at the dead cell level. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing because you could do a lot of things by manipulating the sprinkles because there's a relationship, a connection, a communication system between the sprinkles and the candy coating and the beef. They talk to each other. And when uh, cells are removed off the surface, if you do it correctly, you can actually initiate chemistry. You can actually make things happen chemically that will affect wrinkles and really create tightening skin at the beef level. Does that that's make sense? Oh, yeah. Isn't that, so you understand what I'm saying? Yes. By manipulating the sprinkles, we can have an effect on the beef if mm -hmm. we do this correctly. And this is what really good skin, what skin care should really be about, in my opinion, as a scientist, as a formulator, as a pharmacist, as somebody who's interested in changing the quality of the body or the tissues of the body or creating some kind of effect. We need to access metabolism, chemistry, right? right. Skin care doesn't do that for the most part because we didn't really understand the chemistry of, of the skin. We didn't understand the physiology, the metabolic basis of what's happening in the skin until 20 years ago, 30 years ago. 
I'm giving you the dirty little secrets of skincare, and I've been in it since 1983 from on all levels in, in the scientific side and the formulation and production side of things. And this is the dirty little secret. They don't work. Now, say, why don't my skincare products work? Well, guess what? What's the definition of a drug? A drug is a, defined by the Food and Drug Administration as a substance that creates a change in the body, a substance that you take from the outside of the body, put inside the body, and create some kind of change. If skincare products truly worked, guess what they would be? A drug. Exactly. And so you say, oh my God, I can't do it. What am I going to do for skincare? Ah, the, that's a great question because you can do something. See, there's a loophole in the drug definition. Okay? Okay. The dr a drug is defined as something that comes from the outside of the body, puts on the inside of the body, uh, put in the body, creates a change. So that means a, an effective skincare product is going to be a drug. Yeah. However, the loophole is things from outside the body. If your body makes it, it's not a drug. Okay. So if you can find ingredients that are made by the body or somehow utilized by the body, you can truly get effects on the skin without going into the drug status. Okay. You follow what I'm saying? Yep. So you, you exploit that loophole. Did I explain that well? I feel you like really, I yes, you did. Okay. So okay. what is that loophole? Good. Ah, this is what we're talking about. This okay. is what, and this is how I, I'm a pharmacist by training. I went to pharmacy school and I got a pharmacy degree. So I know how to, use, how to work that loophole. And that's how I designed my skincare products. And that's how I came across this idea of, of using specific ingredients to affect metabolic changes, chemistry changes. One of the best of the, one of the most powerful of these ingredients is alpha hydroxy acids. Okay. Okay, alpha hydroxy acids are a family of acids, of a, uh, very simple chemical structures that are found everywhere in nature, including your human body, including your skin, including the cells of your body. Lactic acid is a common metabolic product. It's a very basic chemical. Alpha hydroxy acids are very familiar to the skin. But when you put alpha hydroxy acids something on top of the skin, something very interesting happens when you put them on top of the skin. Alpha hydroxy acids have this unique ability to dissolve the connections that hold dead skin cells in place. If you have a scaly skin, flaky skin, mm -hmm. you got a problem with that, the enzymatic reactions that are making the skin cells flop off. Dandruff is like flaky skin on the scalp. It's the okay. same thing. Yeah. It's related to how, chemi how chemicals in the skin cause cells to flop off. There's these enzymes in the skin that degrade uh, the bonds that hold these dead skin cells in place. What alpha hydroxy acids do exquisitely is they act like not in an enzyme fashion but in a similar fashion functionally to dissolve the glue that holds those dead skin cells in place improving their ability to flop off. Mm -hmm. This is a very important, now this may seem trivial but let me tell you why it's not trivial. Okay, it's very very important. Number one you could see that by uh, dissolving the glue on the surface, they have this ability to, to smooth the skin because they're causing these dead cells to flop off, so you reveal right. tighter skin underneath. You can create a nice smooth glow to the skin simply by alpha hydroxy acids uh, uh, improving the ability of cells to flop off, right? right. And this is, this is why I love using alpha hydroxy acids, as we said last week, in cleansers, because the cleansing action supports this flopping off, and if you do it on a regular basis, then you start to really get some good benefits. But I want to get to that in a second. For okay. now, just understand the, the glycolic acid, alpha hydroxy acids, and there's many of them, lactic acid, malic acid, tartaric acid, all of these uh, alpha hydroxy acids improve the cells, uh, skin cells' ability to flop off. So you get a smooth appearance to the skin. If you use alpha hydroxy acids in a toner, your toning process will be a true tightening process in the sense that you'll improve, the skin will look tighter. There's, there's also a real chemical tightening that's going to take place over the course of months. Alpha hydroxy acids accomplish this effect in a non-drug fashion by definition. You get an immediate tightening effect by using the alpha hydroxy acids. You get it in a non-drug fashion. You get a product that really works is what I'm trying to say here. Okay? Mm -hmm. If you use alpha hydroxy acids in specific products, you get a product that truly works, that affects a metabolic change. Number one, you're going to get this tightening effect, this is a superficial tightening, but number two, as cells flop off the top, because they're in constant communication with the beef and with the candy coating, yeah. both the beef and the candy coating, singles, the signals are sent down to the bottom to turn chemistry on. It's almost as if there's a message that says, hey, the shingles are missing from the roof. We need some more shingles coming up, okay? okay. It's an anabolic message. It's a signaling message that, said, that says growth must happen. This is why they're anti-aging because as we get older, these growth signals slow down. And you get less shingles, if you will. And you get less beef because as it turns out, the, there's signals that are sent down to the beef. 
Okay. When you when you uh, the sprinkles the dead dead cells flop off, you encourage the flopping off. That's called, as I'm sure you know, exfoliation. Mm -hmm. Or if it's happening naturally, they call it desquamation. Desquamation is what happens ordinarily. Exfoliation is what you do. In any case, yeah. when you exfoliate or when there's desquamation, signals are sent all the way down to the beef, and that and you get bigger beef, you get thicker beef, and that's where the long term anti wrinkle effects come from. So you get this one two punch with alpha hydroxy acid toners that makes your toner, number one, make the skin look really good immediately. And I'm going to tell you a few other things that will happen almost immediately. And then um, you get long-term results. You get an improvement in the beef. You get more connective tissue. The beef is called connective tissue. You get more connective tissue. And connective tissue is, co is collagen, which all women know about, elastin, another type of protein that gives the skin an elastic quality, and most importantly, or, or as importantly, sugars that swell when they contact water and that have a, a healing property and an anti-cancer property and a building property. You get secretion of all of these simply by removing the dead cells off of the surface. So you could turn your toner into a metabolic, anabolic stimulant, a, a, building, a building process. Instead of just toning like with this ineffective water alcohol based product, which is what almost all toners are, yeah. Okay, they're almost all toners are water and alcohol. Occasionally they'll put a little herb in there, or a little bit of a, a maybe a, a moisturizer to make you feel like something's happening. That just softens the stratum corneum, which you, you know you may like, but it's not really doing anything. Okay. If you use alpha hydroxy acids in a toner, you turn the toning experience into a, a exercise experience. And that's what really really the theme here is we want to exercise the skin. We want to stimulate the skin. That's what our cleansers are doing, that's how, and that's now what our toners are doing. In fact, cleansing and toning are the first half of this two-part process for taking care of the skin. There's the exercise phase and there's the nourishment phase. You okay. don't need to tone every day. You don't need to tone but three or four times a week if you do it correctly. You want, as a matter of fact, you want to have those off days because that's when the tissue grows. So, can I, so let me if just, I can ask you, on those off days, in the same way we want to use a gentle oil to clean our skin, do we want to hydrate with something or just nothing? Shouldn't have to. The benefits of the alpha hydroxy acids, lots of benefits here, okay? Number one, you get that immediate smoothing effect. That's wonderful. Number two, pore size. You know, everybody's always obsessed with pore size. Well, pore size, you can't really do anything about. Pores are, there's no little muscles that open and close pores. What a pore is, is really the entrance into the sebaceous and sweat glands. So you're seeing how a sebum, skin oil, and sweat are coming out. They're the openings for the evacuation of sebum and sweat, which means the more sebum and the more sweat, the bigger the pores. You follow? Yeah. So, so using alpha hydroxy acids can help dissolve sebum. And so it can shrink pores in this way. If there's any kind of sticky material, it can help flush that away. You can't really shrink pores mechanically, but visually, the appearance, the pores will appear smaller. Also, if you have a lot of loose, flaky, dead skin around the pores, sometimes that can make the pores, that can accentuate the appearance of the pores. And by smoothing everything out, you can also make the skin look tighter. So you can change the appearance of pore size. You can't really do anything about pore size. However, the fact that it's taking care, it's addressing sebaceous secretions in the pores means it's going to be anti-acne. So it's going to prevent blemishes. And it's also going to prevent ingrown hairs. And it's also going to improve blemished skin. Toners, alpha hydroxy acid toners. Then if you have hyperpigmentation, dark spots, right? Like you were talking about the other day. Oh, yeah. Right? Yes. Darks, it can help slough those away. So you can improve over the course of time, you can improve the tone of the skin, the, the coloring of the skin. It's okay. a lot of benefits. You're now talking about some serious stuff uh, from a toner. Absolutely. And on top of everything else, you're building the beef. You're stimulating the connective tissue. Okay. You're turning on collagen production. You're, so you get long-term benefits as well. You want to look for pH how acid the product is. The skin has a certain acidity it likes to be at. Healthier skin is more acidic. Sicker skin is, it has a higher pH. It's more alkaline. Acidifying the skin is in our interest. If you really acidify the skin, you stimulate growth not only by exfoliation, but also by low pH. Low pH is a growth stimulant. So you get, a, you get an extra a bonus. You're going to okay. get the stimulation via the desquamation and the exfoliation, but you're going to get a bonus, a one-two punch. Acid stimulates, especially lactic acid, is almost like a growth factor. It stimulates the growth of cells. It stimulates the division of cells. It makes things happen, basically. Now, you don't want too much acid. Acid is actually a, a metabolic waste. But short bursts of acidity can act as a growth stimulant. 
so we, we talked about the three layers of the skin. We said that there's sprinkles on the top, that's the dead cells, and then there's this stuff underneath that's maybe about as thick as a piece of paper. That's called the epidermis. And then underneath, you have the bulk of the skin. That's called the dermis. 90% of the skin is underneath where you can't see it. That is not to say, however, that that thin layer at the top that's as thin as a piece of paper that's called an epidermis doesn't have a role to play. And it's not to say that you can't benefit the epidermis and improve all of the functions of the epidermis by using these, these exercise techniques, the toners and such. So I wanted to talk just a little bit about the epidermis just for a moment or two. The epidermis, this uh, uh, what I like to think of as the candy coating on top of the beef, has numerous roles to play that have implications in the health of the skin, the health of the organ called the skin. For example, the epidermis is where moisture factors are produced. So by stimulating the growth of the epidermis via our exfoliating or exercising techniques, you can actually improve the production of moisture factors. You can actually have moisture, more hydrated skin via these exercising procedures. This is almost counterintuitive yeah. because it kind of seems like if you're exfoliating and you're removing the dead cells, you may cause evaporation of moisture. The t uh, typical moisturizing techniques involve occlusion. It covers things up, the theory being you're going to trap water in. But as it turns out, by stimulating the removal, the desquamation, the exfoliation, the flopping off of the sprinkles, the dead cells on the surface, you can actually stimulate the production of moisture factors from the epidermis. Something called the natural moisture factor is a compound that is produced as cells are rising to the top and as you're uh, encouraging the flopping off of cells on the surface and more cells are coming up to the top, you're actually improving the production of these natural moisture factors. So you're actually getting moisture skin, more hydrated skin, but naturally moisture skin, naturally more hydrated skin. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. The epidermis is also the home of antimicrobial peptides, these little tiny amino acid kind of structures, little small proteins that protect the skin from bacteria and viruses and other microbes. You're upregulating or increasing the production of these antimicrobial peptides. You're also increasing the production of environmental protectin molecules by uh, exercising the skin, encouraging the flopping off of dead skin cells on the surface. You're also producing the, uh, improving the production of melanin, which is a uh, a uh, sun protecting pigment. So multiple anti-aging functions can be upregulated. I love that word upregulation. That means increased. Multiple anti-aging functions of the epidermis can be upregulated via these exfoliation exercise desquamation techniques encouraging the flopping off of cells. To me this is this is what a toner should do. So you're actually accessing, improving the, metab uh, the chemistry, the metabolism of the skin if you, use your, if you use an alpha hydroxy acid toner, if you're selective about the kind of toners you use. If we were to want to do this at home, what ingredients could we use? Citrus fruits. Okay. You can make your own with citrus fruits. Citrus fruits are nature's best source of alpha hydroxy acids. Uh, uh, you can experiment. I love vegetables on the skin. However, with, alpha hydro with vegetables, you want to use them fresh. You'll get all the veggies. And you're not going to get the really strong, strong acidity that you can get with a straight glycolic acid or lactic acid. So the question is, where do you get it? Well, you can wait for my skincare line to come out. And, oh, that, yeah. and then. But in the meantime, what can we do? In the meantime, to get the real strong stuff, you have to have a pharmacist compounded for you. Okay. Yeah. The good stuff's hard to find. But you can make your own. You can make your own with, uh, with uh, uh, vegetables, get a Vitamix. Uh, I think we talked in the pa uh, last time or in the past, we've talked about using canned lemonade, canned yeah. lemon juice, apple cider vinegar, uh, red wine. These are all natures of milk. These are all nature sources of alpha hydroxy acids. And they're, and they're very, very, uh, it doesn't take long for you to notice effects. They're, okay. You'll see benefits pretty quickly. Now, the neatest thing about toning, now I told you a bunch of benefits, more connective tissue, smoother, better pores. Oh, I didn't tell you about excretion. The skin is a, a route of excretion of toxins. This, this is yeah. a lot of stuff for a toner. So there's a lot of things you're going to get with a toner if you do it correctly. Uh, low pH, use alpha hydroxy acids in toners and you take days off. That's basically how you want to do it. But the beautiful thing about our process of cleansing and toning, the first half of our, of our two-part process of taking care of the skin, is you're preparing the skin for the next step. And that's really what you're doing. That's really where the, the wonderful benefits come from. We can talk about that in our next video. <laughs> Go to The Truth, my Facebook page. If you guys, okay. I should tell people that, you know, yes. about my Facebook page, The Truth with Ben. And uh, send me a note and say that you heard this video. Uh, what I use is a multi-fruit extract, not just glycolic acid. Okay. I use a, a, a product that I, uh, raw material that I buy, and then I dilute it with different, into different concentrations. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and it's made with apple and uh, uh, citrus, uh, citrus fruits and uh, uh, dairy, lactic acid as well. It's multiple alpha hydroxy acids from multiple sources. It's like a multi-fruit alpha hydroxy acid. And then I like to, if you're uh, really going aggressive, spray minerals on your face. The minerals on the face will react with the alpha hydroxy acids. You'll get better penetration of the minerals, and the minerals will actually neutralize any excess acid. So if you're using a real, if you only have a little bit of acid, like 3.0, remember the skin has got a pH of about 4.5 to 5.5, right? So that's right. slightly acidic. If you go to around 3-ish, 4-ish, that's not too terribly different from the skin's pH. It's about 10 times more acidic. But if you go into 2, that's 100 times more acidic. Then you're starting to get into some acid, and you might want to finish off your uh, procedure with some minerals. And I also have mineral sprays, uh, mineral spray that I use. Okay. Mineral spray with a few other things. Okay. That, okay, so it's a, is it a plant-derived mineral that you plant make? Plant-derived minerals. That Absolutely. you make? Yes, and, that I make. Okay. And, and the toners and the peels I make as well. Okay, wow. I'm excited, and I can't wait to get my hands on some of these things. Okay, well, I'll, what I'll do is in the next couple of weeks, I'll send you out a nice little kit. I'll put everything together for you. Absolutely, and then I'm going okay. to try it, and I'm going to show everybody um, the wonderful things that your products do, and okay. we'll, just continue from, we'll just continue from there. Um, and now that we've talked about toning, the next step, the next interview, what, next time we chat, will be about the feeding of the skin. Feeding the skin, yes. Do not underestimate the power of feeding. But the toning, the beautiful thing about toning, as I said, it prepares the skin okay. for the next step, which in my opinion is the, is the most important step. Absolutely. So stay okay. tuned, everybody. Uh, the next video is coming up soon. And uh, have a great week until then. All right. Bye-bye. Thank bye, then. you, man. Bye. Okay, so this is the proper way to tone your skin, okay? It's very simple. You buy these cosmetic pads. Can you see those? I don't know if you can see those. Are those those round see? cotton pads? Yeah, those round, round cotton pads. Okay. Like this. And this is a, uh, my glycolic toner. I, I actually made it with multiple fruit acids, not just glycolic. I have, uh, as you know, I got my own little facility. I can make stuff. Um, and so anyway, you put some of this in here like this, and then you simply do this. And as you're doing this, you're removing the dead cells. And as you're removing the dead cells, you're changing the tone of the skin, the pigmentation of the skin, number one. You're improving pore size, getting rid of sebum, oils. This is all from using a toner, okay? Wow. Um, uh, getting rid of sebum, and you're, you're turning on the connective tissue, the beef. What are you laughing about? <laughs> You've got cotton stuck on your... What are you laughing? You're just picking... Am I? That's funny. <laughs> Whatever. You get the point. No, Her you've got to look at yourself and take that. Oh, you mean I look like Santa Claus or something? My beard. That's funny. Is it that funny? Yeah, Is it's it? all over the place. Well, I don't have a mirror here and okay. I can't see. So. Okay, hold on a minute. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, get, I'm glad you're getting a kick out of it. We're trying to demonstrate. <laughs> can you, can you? <laughs> look in the mirror. This is absolutely like changing please, your life, I tell. Please. You're going to wet your pants here in a second. I can see. You are. You're. All right. Hang on. 